चैप्टर सेवन डाइवर्सिटी इन लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म हैव यू एवर थॉट ऑफ द मल्टीट्यूड ऑफ लाइफ फॉर्म्स दैट सराउंड दस ईच ऑर्गेनिज्म इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द अदर टू अ लेसर और ग्रेटर एक्सटेंट फॉर इंस्टेंस कंसीडर योरसेल्फ एंड अ फ्रेंड आर यू बोथ ऑफ सेम हाइट does your nose look exactly like your friend nose is your hand span the same as your friend's however if we were to compare ourselves and our friends with a monkey what would we say obviously we and our friends have a lot in common when we compare ourselves with a monkey but suppose we were to add a cow to the comparison we would then think that the monkey has a lot more in common with us than with the cow your activity we have heard of desi cows and jersey cows desi does a desi cow look like a jersey cow do all desi cows look alike will we be able to identify a jersey cow in a crowd of the desi cow that don't look like each other what is the basis of our identification in this activity we had to decide which characteristics were more important in forming the desired category hence we were also deciding which characteristics could be ignored now think of all the different forms in which life occurs on earth on one hand we have microscopic bacteria of a few micrometers in size while on the other hand we have blue well and redwood trees of california of a approximate size of 30 meters and 100 meters respectively some pine trees live for thousand of years while insect like mosquito die within a few days life also range from colorless or even transparent tomes to brightly colored birds and flower the bewildering variety of life around us has evolved on the earth over millions of years however we do not have more than a tiny fraction of this time to try and understand all these living organisms so we cannot look at them one by one instead we look for similarities among the organisms which will allow us to put them into different classes and then study different classes or groups as a whole in order to make relevant groups to study the variety of life forms we need to decide which characteristics decide more fundamental difference among organism this would create the main broad groups of organism within this group smaller subgroups will be decided by the less important characteristics your question why do we classify organism to give three examples of the range of variation that you see in life from around you comment this next what is the basis of classification attempts at classifying living things into groups have been made since time immemorial the greek thinker aristotle classified animals according to whether they lived on land in water or in the air this is a very simple way of looking at life but misleading too for example animals that live in the sea include coral whales octopuses jellyfishes and sharks we can immediately see that these are very different from each other in numerous ways in fact habitat is the only point they share in common this is not an appropriate way of making group of organism to study and think about we therefore need to decide which characteristics to be used as the basis of making the broadcast division then we will have to pick the next set of characteristics to making subgroups within this division this process of classification within each group can then continue using new characteristics each time before we go on we need to 
think about what is meant by characteristics when we are trying to classify a diverse group of organisms. We need to find ways in which some of them are similar enough to be thought of together. These ways, in fact, are details of appearance or behavior in other words, form and function. What do we mean by characteristics is a particular feature or a particular function that most of us have five fingers on each hand is thus a characteristic that we can run but the banyan tree cannot eat also a characteristic. Now to understand how some characteristics are decided as being more fundamental than others. Let us consider how a stone wall is built. The stone used will have different shapes and size. The stones at the top of the wall would not influence the choice of stones that come below them. On the other hand, the shapes and size of stones in the lowermost layer will decide the shape and size of the next layer and so on. The stone in the lowermost layer are like the characteristics that decide the broad cup division among living organisms. They are independent of any other characteristics in their effect on the form and function of the organism. The characteristics in the next level would be dependent on the previous one and would decide the variety in the next level. In this way, we can build up a whole hierarchy of mutually related characteristics to be used for classification. Nowadays, we look at many interrelated characteristics starting from the nature of the cell in order to classify our living organism. What are some concrete examples of such characteristics used for hierarchical classification? A eukaryotic cell has membrane bound organelles including a nucleus which allow cellular processes to be carried out efficiently in isolation from each other. Therefore, organisms which do not have a clearly demarcated nucleus and other organisms would need to have their biochemical pathways organized in very different ways that would have an effect on every aspect of cell design. Further, Nucleated cell would have the capacity to participate in making a multicellular organism because they can take up specialized function. Therefore, nucleus can be a basic characteristic of classification. Do the cell occur singly or are they grouped together and do they live as an invisible group cell that group together to form a single organism? use the principle of diffusion of labor. In such a body design, all cells would not be identical. Instead, group of cells will carry out specialized function. This makes a very basic distinction in the body design of organism. As a result, an amoeba and a ohm are very different in their body design. Do organisms produce their own food through the process of photosynthesis? Being able to produce one's own food versus having to good food from outside would make very different body design. Of the organism that perform photosynthesis plants, what is the level of organism of their body? Of the animals, how does the individual body develop and organize its different part? And what are the specialized organs found for different function? We can see that even in this few questions that we have asked a hierarchy is developing, the characteristics of body design used for classification of plant will be very different from those important for classifying animals. This is because the basic design are different based on the need to make their own food, plants or acquire animals. Therefore, this design feature having a skeleton, for example, are to be used to make subgroups rather than making broad groups. Questions Which do you think is the more basic characteristic for classifying organism? A. The place where their life be the kind of cells they were made of why? 2. What is the primary characteristics of which the broad division of organism is made? Number 3. On what basis are plants and animals put into different categories? Comment this. 
नेक्स्ट क्लासिफिकेशन एंड इवोल्यूशन ऑल लिविंग थिंग्स आर आइडेंटिफाइड एंड कैटेगराइज ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ देयर बॉडी डिजाइन इन फॉर्म एंड फंक्शन सम कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स आर लाइकली टू मेक मोर वाइड रेंजिंग चेंजेस इन बॉडी डिजाइन देन अदर्स देयर इज अ रूल ऑफ टाइम इन दिन दिस एज वेल so once a certain body design comes into existence it will set the effect of all other subsequent design changes simply because it already exists in other words characteristics that came into exist earlier are likely to be more basic than characteristics that have come into exist later this means that the classification of life form will be closely related to their evolution form will be closely related to their evolution what is evolution most of life forms that we see today have arisen by an accumulation of changes in the body design that allow the organism processing them to survive better charles darwin first described this idea of evolution in 1859 in the book the origin of species more to know biodiversity means the diversity of life forms it is a word commonly used to refer to the variety of life forms found in a particular region diverse life forms share the environment and are affected by each other too as a result a stable community of different species come into existence human have played their own part in recent times in changing the balance of such communities of course the diversity in such communities is affected by a particular characteristics of land water climate and so on rough estimates state that there are about 10 million species on the planet although we actually know only one or two millions of them the warm and humid tropical region of the earth between the tropic of cancer and the tropic of capricorn rich in diversity of uh, plant and animal life this is called the region of mega diversity of the biodiversity on the planet more than half is concentrated in a few countries this is brazil colombia ecuador peru mexico Jaire, Madagascar, Australia, China, India, Indonesia, and Malaysia. Next question: Which organism are called primitive, and how are they different from the so-called advanced organism? Number two: Will advanced organism be the same as complex organism? Why? Comment this. Next. the hierarchy of classification groups biologists such as ernest haeckel 1894 robert whitaker 1969 and carl hus 1977 have tried to classify all living organism into broad category called kingdoms the classification of whitaker proposed has five kingdoms monera protista fungi planti and animalia and is widely used this group are formed on the basis of their cell structure more than source of nutrition and body organism the modification was introduced by dividing the monera into archaeobacteria or archi the eu bacteria or bacterium is also is used Further classification is done by naming the subgroup of various level as given in the following scheme: kingdom, the phylum for animals, division for plants. This is the class. Next order. Next family. Next genus. Next species. Thus, by separating organisms on the basis of a hierarchy of characteristics into smaller and smaller groups, we arrived. at the basic unit of classification which is the species so what organisms can be said to being to the
gen species broadly a species include all organisms that are similar enough to breed and perpetuate the important characteristics of the five kingdoms of white tucker are as follows next monera this organism do not have a defined nucleus of organelles not do any of them show multicellular body design on the other hand they show diversity based on many other characteristics some of them have cell wall while some do not of course having or not having a cell wall has a very different effect on body design hair form having or not having a cell wall in multicellular organism the mode of nutrition of organism in the group can be either by synthesis using their own food autotrophic or getting it from the environment heterotrophic this group includes bacteria blue green algae or cyanobacteria and mycoplasma and some example are shown in figure 7.1 the 7.1 this is monera picture this is bacteria this is adobina the resting resting spore and this is a heterocyst next protista this group includes many kinds of unicellular eukaryotic organism some of these organism were appendages such as hair like cilia or whip like flagella or moving around their mode of nutrition can be autotrophic or heterotrophic example are unicellular algae diatoms and protozoans for example this is protozoa first uh, paramecium this is a macronucleus this is a micronucleus and this is the west this is amoeba and this is nucleus this is euglena this is the flagellum long and the nucleus next fungi these are heterotrophic eukaryotic organism some of them use decaying organism saprotrophs decaying organic material as food as are therefore called saprotrophs other required a living protoplasm of a host organism for food they are called parasite many of them have the capacity to become multicellular organism at certain stage in their life they have cell walls made of tough complex sugar called chitin complex sugar example are yeast molds and mushrooms this is the fungi saccharomyces this is called the yeast this is a penicillium with mold and agaricus mushroom some fungal species live in permanent mutually dependent relationship with blue green algae or cyanobacteria such relationship are called symbiotic this symbiotic life forms are called lichen we have all seen lichen as the slow grow large colored patches on the bark of trees next plant is these are multicellular eukaryotic with cell walls they are autotrophs and use chlorophyll for photosynthesis thus all plants are included in this group since plant and animals are most visible forms of the diversity of life around us we will look at the subgroup in this category later next 
animalia. This includes all organisms which are multicellular eukaryotic without cell walls. They are heterotrophs. Again, we will look at their subgroups a little later in section 7.5. This is the five kingdom classification organisms are two types prokaryotes, eukaryotes, prokaryote unicellular means monera. Eukaryotes are two types unicellular, multicellular. Unicellular means protista. Multicellular are which cell wall? Without cell wall means animalia. With cell wall, a two types do not perform photosynthesis and able to perform photosynthesis means fungi and means planty. Next question What is the criterion for classification of organisms as belonging to kingdom Monera or Protista? In which kingdom will you place an organism which is single cell, eukaryotic and photosynthetic? In the hierarchy of classification, which grouping will have the smallest number of organisms with maximum common characteristics and which will have the largest number of organisms? Comment this. Next, planty. The first level of classification among plant depends on whether the plant body has well differentiated distinct part the next level of classification is based on whether the differentiated plant body has special tissues for the transparent of water and other substances further classification looks at the ability to bear seeds and whether the seeds are enclosed within fruit uh, there thallophyta plants that do not have well defined body design fall in the group the plant in this group are commonly called algae these plants are predominantly aquatic examples are spirogyra eulothrix cladophora vulva and cara This is the thallophyta algae. First, Eulothrix, this is Cladophora, this is Valva, this is Pyrogyra, this is important uh, cell wall, this is a chloroplast, the pyrenoids, and nucleus and cytoplasm next cara next uh, bryophyta these are called the amphibians of plant kingdom the plant body is commonly differentiated to form stem and leaf like structure however there is no specialized tissue for conduction of water and other substances from one part of the plant body to another. Example are mosses, funaria, and mercantia. This is the some common bryophyta, rixia, mercantia, that is the funaria. Next, pteridophyta. In this group, the plant body is differentiated into roots, stem and leaf has specialized tissue for the conduction of water and other substances from one part of the plant body to another. Some examples are Marsalia, fern and horsetail. The reproductive organs of plant in the, these three groups are very species and they are therefore called cryptogams or those with hidden reproductive organs 
On the other hand, plant with well-differentiated reproductive part that ultimately make seeds are called phanerograms. Seeds are the result of sexual reproduction process. This consists of the embryo along with stored food which assists for the initial growth of the embryo during germination. This group is further classified based on whether the seeds are naked or enclosed in fruit, giving us two groups, gymnosperms and angiosperms. This is the pteridophyta, marcellia, this is the leaf, and the stem and this is the root and this is the fern. Next gymnosperms. This term is derived from two Greek words. Gymno means naked and sperma means seed. The plants of this group bear naked seed and are usually perennial evergreen and woody. Example are pines and the other. This is gymnosperms, the pinus, this is the cycus. Next, angiosperm. This word is made from two Greek words. Angio means covered and sperma means seed. These are also called flowering plants. The seeds develop inside an ovary which is modified to become a fruit. Plant embryos in seed have structure called cotyledon. Cotyledons are called seed leaves because in many instances they emerge and become green when the seed germinates. The angiosperm are divided into two groups on the basis of number of cotyledons present in seed. Plants with seed having a single cotyledon are called the monocotyledonous or monocots. Plants with seed having two cotyledons are called dicots. This is monocot and this is dicot. Plants are two types, do not have differentiated plant part and have differentiated plant parts. This is thallophyta. Have differentiated plant parts are two types without specialized vascular tissue means bryophyta and with vascular tissue. With vascular tissue are two types, do not produce seed means pteridophyta and produce seed phanerogams. Produce seed phanerogams are two types, bear naked seed means gymnosperm and bear seeds inside fruit means angiosperm. Angiosperm are two types, have seeds with two cotyledon means dicot and have seeds with one cotyledon means monocot. Okay, this is classification of plant. Next activity, shock seeds of green grams, wheat, maize, peas and tamarind. Once they become tender, try to split the seed. Do all the seeds break into two nearly equal halves? The seeds that do are the dicot seeds and the seeds that don't are the monocot seeds. Now take a look at the root, leaf and flower of these plants. Are the roots tab roots or fibrous? Do the leaves have parallel or reticulate plantation? Comment this. How many petals are found in the flower of this plant? Can you write down further characteristics of monocots and dicots on the basis of this observation? Next question. 
which division among plant has the simplest organism number 2 how are the pteridophytes different from phanerogams number 3 how do gymnosperms and angiosperms differ from each other comment this next animalia these are organisms which are eukaryotic multicellular heterotrophic their cells do not have cell walls most animals are mobile they are further classified based on the extent the type of the body design differentiation found first porifera the word porifera means organism with holes these are non motile animals attached to some solid support these are holes or pores all over the body this led to a canal system that help in circulating water throughout the body to bring in fruit and oxygen these animals are covered with a hard outside layer or skeleton the body design involved very minimal differentiation into digestion into tissues they are commonly called sponge and are mainly found in marine habitats some example are shown this is porifera the euplectella the cycon spongila next colenterata means nida ria these are animals living in water they show more body design differentiation there is a cavity in the body the body is made up two layers of cell one make up cells on the outside of the body and the other makes the inner inning lining of the body some of these species live in colonies corals which others have a solitary like span hydra jellyfish and sea anemones are common example this is colenterata and hydra the tentacles stinging cell mouth epidermis mosocilia gastrodermis gastrovascular cavity this is foot okay and sea anemone tentacles platy helminthes the body of animal in this group is far more complexly designed than in the two other groups we have considered so far the body is bilaterally symmetrical meaning that the left and right half of the body have the same design these are three layers of cell from which different sort of tissue can be made which is why such animals are called triploblastic this allows outside and inside body lining as well as some organs to be made there is thus some degree of tissue formation however there is no true internal body cavity or cellum in which well developed organs can be accommodated the body is flattened dorsoventrally meaning from top to bottom which is why these animals are called platoms they are either free living or parasites some example are free living animals like planarians or parasitic animals like liver flip this is platy helminthes planaria this is eyes this pharynx mouth and anus 
Dus het levert plek. Branch gastrovascular cavity and acetabulum. This is the branch gastrovascular cavity and scolex, sucker and neck. This is the tap worm. Nematoda. Next. The nematode body is also bilaterally symmetrical and tripoblastic. However, the body is cylindrical rather than flattened. They are tissues but no real organs. Although it is short of body cavity or a pseudocilum is present. They are very familiar as parasitic ohms causing disease such as the ohm causing elephantias phyladial ohms or the ohms in the intestines round ohms or fine ohms some example are shown in figure this is nematoda S.J. Helminthes, Ascaris, this is male and this is female, Eucheria, next Anilida, Anilids animals are also bilaterally symmetrical and tripoblastic but in addition they have a true body cavity. This allows true organ to be packaged in a body structure. There is thus extensive organ differentiation. This differentiation occurs in segmental fashion, which with the segments line up one after the other from head to tail. These animals are found in variety of habitat, fresh water, marine water, as well as land. Our thumbs and leeches are familiar example this is annelida nerif tentacle pulp parapodia parapodia artho genital papillae and anus leech arthropoda this is probably the largest group of animals. These animals are bilaterally symmetrical and segmented. There is an open circulatory system and so the blood does not flow in well defined blood vessel. The colomic cavity is blood filled. They have joint legs. The word arthropod means joint legs. Some family examples are prawn, butterflies, houseflies, spiders, scorpions, carbs, etc. This is the figure of arthropoda. Palimon, prawn. Palamonia, scorpion. Arania, spider. Butterfly, Musca, Housefly, Periplaneta, Cockroach, and Scolopendra, Centipede. Next, Mollusca. In the animals of this group, there is bilateral symmetry. The columnic cavity is reduced. This is little segmentation. They have an open circulatory system and kidney like organs of ex excretion. There is a food that is used for moving around. Example are snails and mussels. This is mollusca, chiton. Octopus, Pila, Unio. 
Next, Echinodermata. In Greek, Echinos means headache, spiny mammals, and derma means skin. Thus, this is a spiny skin organism. These are exclusively free living marine animals. They are tripoblastic and have a columnic cavity. They also have a peculiar water driven tube system that they use for moving around. They have hard calcium carbonate structure that they use a skeleton. Example are sea star and sea archin. This is Echinodal Marta, Antidon, Feather Star, Holothuria, Sea Cucumber, Echinos, Sea Archin, Asteris, Sea Star, Protocordata. These animals are bilaterally symmetrical, tripoblastic, and have a coelom. In addition, they show a new feature of body design, namely notochord. At least at some stage during their life, the notochord is a long rod-like support structure, cord means string, that runs along the back of the animal separating the nervous tissue from the gut. That provides a place for muscle to attach for ease of movement. Protocordatus may not have a proper notochord present at all stages in their lives or for the entire length of animal. Protocordatus are marine animals, example are balanoglossus, herdmania, and ampexus. This is Protocordata balanoglossus. This is proboscis colorate, this is collar, the branchial region, this is gale spore, dorsally curved genital wings, and the midorsal ridge, hepatic cacca, hepatic region, and this is anus, and this is first hepatic region. Next, vertebrata. These animals have a true vertebral columns and internal skeleton allowing a completely different distribution of muscle attachment point to be used for movement. Vertebrates are bilaterally symmetrical, tripoblastic, columnic, and segmented with complex differentiation of body tissues and organs. All chordators possess the following feature. Number one, have a notochord. Number two, have a dorsal nerve cord. Number three, are tripoblastic. Number four, have paired gill pouches. Number five, are colomate. Vertebrates are grouped into six classes. First class is cyclostomata. Cyclostomes are jawless vertebrates. Their characteristics are having an elongated eel-like body, circular mouth, slim skin, and are scaleless. They are ectoparasite or borers of other vertebrates. Petromyzon lamprey and myxin hackfish are example. This is the a jawless vertebrate petrovision. Next piscus. These are fish. They are exclusively aquatic animals. Their skin is covered with scales, plates, they obtain oxygen dissolved in water by using gills. The body is streamlined 
and a muscular tail in use for movement. They are cold blooded and their hearts have only two chambers. Unlike the four that humans they lay eggs. We can think of many kinds of fish, some of with calf skeleton made entirely of cartilage such as shark and some with a skeleton made of both bones and cartilage such as a tuna or rohu. This is Piscus. Syncripal splendesis. Mandarin fish. Colophrine, Jordani, angler fish. And the Tredus, Volitans, lion fish. This is electric ray, torpedo. This is eye, spiracles, pelvic fin, dorsal fin, caudal fin, the tail. And this is string ray. And next, scolidon, dogfish. Mouth, eye, gills, pectoral fins, pelvic fins, tail, dorsal fins. Next, discuss Labia Rohita, Rohu. This is eye, head, nostril, mouth, pectoral fin, pelvic fin, and caudal fin. Male, hippocampus, seahorse, pectoral fin, dorsal fin, mouth. Blood pouch, tail. This is exocytus. Flying fish, wing like pectoral, scales, pelvic fin, tail. Anabas, climbing perch. Next, amphibia. These animals differ from the fish in the lack of scale in having muscle glands in the skin and a three chambered heart. Respiration is through either gills or lungs. They lay eggs. These animals are found both in water and land. Frogs, toads, salamanders are some examples. Amphibia, salamanders, toad, rana tigrina, common frog, and the hyla, tree frog. Next, reptilia. These animals are cold blooded, have scales and breathe through lungs, while most of them have a three chamber heart. Crocodile have four heart chamber. They lay eggs with tough covering and do not need to lay their eggs in water. Unlike amphibians, the snakes turtle, lizard and crocodile fall in this category. This is reptilia, turtle, chameleon, king cobra, flying lizard, draco, housewall lizard, hemidectylus. Next abyss. These are warm blooded animal have a four chambered heart. They lay eggs. There is an outside covering of feathers and two four limbs are modified for flight. 
they breathed through lungs. A all bird fall in category. Abyss birds. White stock. Siconia, Siconia. Ostrich. Stuthrio camelops. And male tufted duck. Aithya faligala. And the pigeon. This is sparrow. This is crow. Next, mammalia. Mammals are warm blooded animals with four chamber heart. They have mammary glands for the production of milk to nourish their young. Their skin has hairs as well as sweet and oil glands. Most mammals familiar to us produce live young ones. However, a few of them like the platypus and echidna lay eggs. And some like kangaroos give birth to very poorly developed young ones. Some examples are shown. The skin of classification of animals is shown. Mammalia. This is whale. This is cat, human, rat, and bat. Next question. How do poriferous animals differ from colonnade element? Next two. How do annelid animals differ from arthropods? Number three. What are the differences between amphibians and reptiles? Number four, what are the differences between animals belonging to the abyss group and those in the mammalia group? Come in this. Next, this is the picture of Corolla Slenius 1707 to 1778. Corolla Slenius Carl von Leni was born in the Sweden and was a doctor a profession he was interested in the study of plant at the age of 22 he published his first paper on plant while serving as a personal physician of a wealthy government official he studied the diversity of plants in his employer's garden later he published 14 papers and also bought out a famous book Systema Naturae, from which all fundamental taxonomical researches have taken off. His system of classification was a simple scheme for arranging plants so as to be able to identify them again. Animals are two types, cellular level of organisms, means porifera, and tissue level of organisms. Tissue level of organisms are three types. There is no body cavity between epidermis and gastrodermis, means cholentrata and platyhelminthes, and pseudocolum, nematoda, and colomate. Colomates are two types mesodermal cell from a single cell during growth of the embryo, means annelida, mollusca, and arthropoda and column form from a pouch of spins of from the endoderm. Column form from pouch of spins of from the endoderm are two types, no notochord, echinodermata, and notochord present. This is called chordata. Chordata are two types, notochord present in the list, larval form, but very rudimentary, means protochordata. And notochord replaced by vertebral clones in adult means vertebrata. Vertebrata are six types. Jawless, ill-like, circular mouth, scaleless, slimy skin means cyclostomata. 
an exoskeleton of scales, endoskeleton of bones, cartilage, breathing through gills, pieces, gills in larva, lungs is most adult, slimy skin, amphibia, exoskeleton of scales laying egg outside water, reptilia, exoskeleton of feathers lay eggs outside water, flight possible, abyss. Exoskeleton of hairs, external ears, most giving birth to live young mammalia. This is the classification of animals. Next, nomenclature. Why is there a need of systematic naming of living organism? Activity. Find out the name of following animals and plants in as many languages as you can. Tiger. Peacock and name lotus potato. Comment this. As you might be able to appreciate, it would be difficult for popular people speaking or writing in different language to know when they are talking about the same organism. This problem was resolved by agreeing upon a scientific name for organism in the same manner that chemical symbols and formula for varieties, various substance and use the world over. The scientific name of an organism is thus unique and can be used to identify it anywhere in the world. The system of scientific naming or nomenclature you used today introduced by Carolus Lenius in the 18th century. The scientific name of organism is the result of process of classification which puts it along with the organism it is most related to. But when we actually name the species, we do not lift out the whole hierarchy of groups it belong to. Instead, we limit ourselves to writing the name of genus and species of the particular organism world over. It had been agreed that both these names, names will be used in Latin forms. Certain conventions are followed while writing the scientific names. Number one, the name of the genus begin with a capital letter. The name of the species begin with a small letter. When printed, the scientific name is given in italics. When written by hand, the genus name and the species name have to be underlined separately. Activity. Find out the scientific name of any five common animals and plants. Do these names have anything in common with the name we normally use to identify them? Comment this. What you have learned? Classification help us in exploring the diversity of life forms. The major characteristics considered for classifying all organisms into five major kingdoms are whether they are made of prokaryotic or eukaryotic cell, whether the cells are living singly and organized into multicellular and thus complex organisms, whether the cell have a cell wall and whether they prepare their own food. All living organisms are divided on the above basis into five kingdoms, namely Monera, Protista, Fungi, Planty and animalia. The classification of life forms is related to their evolution. Planty and animalia are further divided into subdivision on the basis of increasing complexity of body organism. Plants are divided into five groups, thallophytes, bryophytes, pteridophytes, gymnosperm and angiosperm. Animals are divided into 10 groups Porifera, Colentrata, Echinodermata, Platyhelminthes, Nematoda, Annelida, Arthropoda, Mollusca, 
protocordata and vertebrata. The binomial nomenclature makes for a uniform way of identification of vast diversity of life around us. The binomial nomenclature is made up of two words, a generic name and a specific name. Exercises What are the advantages of classifying organisms? Number two, how would you choose between two characteristics to be used for developing a hierarchy in classification? Number three, explain the basis of grouping organisms into five kingdoms. Number four, what are the major division in the plant team? What is the basis of this division? Number five, how are the criteria for deciding division in plants different from the criteria for deciding the subgroups among animals? Number six, explain how animals with vertebrata are classified into further subgroups. Comment this.